Okay, so uh, we're up to eight. Uh, that's part. I'll make this part two of Bridgeton Post Museum. So we're going to go around the area and just take some photos and footage for you. Bridgeton's in Glasgow. It's an old depot that used to be it years, many years ago, but it's just used as a museum and also a workplace for uh, restoring buses. So I'm going out to get some food for you. I'm working my way around this area, there's an inside museum bit and there's workshops behind where the buses are parked There's an indoor bit in there and there's also visitor buses uh, along the street So a lot of the buses that are in the shed there are visiting buses for this area for this Bridgeton Museum and the other buses are visitors But I think they restore all vintage bikes here as well. <laughs> Well, it's the Glasgow Vintage Vehicle Trust, which is based here at Bridgeton Garage. So I'm being October, the weather's very changeable, one minute it's sunny, the next minute it's raining. It's quite cold as well, wouldn't be surprised if it starts to snow. That's the thing, that's the thing about Bridgeton, it's uh, obviously cold. So this bus 276, WTS 276D, it's a Mark II Volvo also, I know this bus very well indeed, <laughs> I know it very well when it was in service in Dundee in the 80s, I came here in 1979, uh, this one's unusual because it's a Mark II Volvo also with a Mark III engine and it still retains its original Mark II rear axle, so it's got the engine sound of a Mark III also but it's still got its rear axle Mark II sound, so it's a very interesting sounding vehicle. It's the only one in the fleet like this that's been convert converted to uh, from a Mark II engine to a Mark III engine. And I'm very fascinated in it, I always have been when I first discovered it in May 1988. I was 13 year old, <laughs> I was going to my friend's house and I remember this bus pulling up from a bus stop and the first thing that I noticed was the engine sound, it sounded like a Mark III and from there on I was just like totally fascinated with it <laughs> it's a very unique bus I've done a separate video on this uh, on its sister bus 300 or 272, the open top of Volvo also Mark II if it's a Mark II engine but this is a, a Mark II with a Mark III engine in it. So 
so I'm just kind of like going along quite quickly. There's a lot of vehicles here. Uh, I've got to watch the battery on this because the battery charger lead is broke. So I'm going to have to limit how much I can film until I get another lead. Because I've got the portable battery, but the battery lead is broke. So I feel like I'd have to resort to my A12, which I don't really want to do. This is the S20, it's a better quality video. So I'm sort of like going around it pretty quick. This is the Mark 1 Volvo Elsa in wedge. It's new to Strathclyde. In contrast with the Mark 2 that you saw. It's at the panoramic windows, long dead windows. I'm just kind of like going on fairly quickly, just there's a lot to see here. Um, I'll get some footage of the buses when I go on them later on, some of the others. Dennis fire engine. There's also other vehicles here as well. So you can probably understand why my videos are quite long because there's a lot to actually see when you go around them all individually. So this is another unique Volvo Elsa Mark 1 that's got a Vantio Meccano bodywork. I've done a video on this one last year, I think it was. I've got footage inside and outside while it was driving, uh, so you can get to hear it. It's, uh, it looks like an Alexander RV type bodywork with a Mark 1 engine. It looks like it. It's not actually Alexander RV type, but it looks it resembles it quite considerably. So uh, you can look at my channel to get about two hours worth of footage of this. So this is a unique bus and I very much like this one, it's an interesting setup. So I have done a video separately on this as I said earlier that you could get a good couple hours worth of footage of this that I took whilst I was travelling around on this one in around about Edinburgh. It was all through the streets of Edinburgh so you got a good bit of footage with that separate video. If you type in, uh, I think I can't remember what I titled it now, Mark on Volvo Elsa Van Body. If I remember I'll put a link in the description, I'll probably forget, but I'm sure you'll find it. If you just type in Mark on Volvo Elsa on my channel, uh, Van Hill Mercado Body, or Van Hill Mark 1, you'll, you'll come across it. I done it last summer, last, not this year, but the year before and it was around the streets of Lothian and Edinburgh so uh, it would be interesting So I've kind of like got a mission to get around here skim around with the camera and if I get a vintage bus into Glasgow Central get a lead for this battery lead and then uh, at least it gets that problem cured I get a shot at the buses at the same time and that's the plan so I'm on a bit of a mission So I've covered that bike of buses on that side I'll walk up the, this side and I'll cover the bank, that side of the buses. The stalls at the other side, at the top. So I'll now start to cover this side. I've done it outside, out there. It's actually I timed it well because it's showering, it's raining at the moment. So I'm, in, I'm under here then I'll go out. Once I've done this bit, I'll go out and get footage from the outside of the visitor vehicles. These are resident vehicles for Bridgeton. So there's buses here that are in various states of uh, restoration. So a lot of work gets done in this area as well. So well, that was uh, back there, so I'll look around here as well. I'll just sort of skiff through quickly with the camera, give you an idea of what's here. It's the best I can do at the moment. 
Uh, we'll get some outside footage of the buses moving as well. <laughs> That's Alexander RV type bodywork. The Mark III Volvo Elsa that I was on earlier in part one was a Mark th uh, an Alexander RV type bodywork with the Volvo Elsa Mark III chassis. I think this one here is MCW or something, is it? Or is it a Leyland one at the end? 100% sure yet, but we're going to have to just skip round at the moment. That's MCW Metro Bus, that yellow one. Not that one, that's uh, Routemaster ATC. This is MCW Metro Bus. Alexander RV type bodywork. It's a Mark, this is a Mark II Volvo Elsa with Alexander AV type bodywork. I'll get a couple of still photographs of that and then pretty much back up to the top. So I've covered the area down there, the area behind these buses. Over that area is where all the stalls are, so you can buy badges, models and stuff. Table that they have for the buses that are going to the museum and Killamot Road. And this is the model of buses that will be running on, the, on that timetable. The Volvo also being the one that I'm very much interested in. So this is for the Saturday. That's for the Saturday the 12th, today, Saturday the 12th October 2024. It's a weekend event, there'll be uh, an event here that will be open again tomorrow, but I can only manage the Saturday today. We've got the banger raising it off daily tomorrow, so I'll be doing a separate video for that. But today anyway, that's the buses that I'm running. So, so like I said, this is the stalls area. This is uh, We've got a stall up there just in the corner, so... So I'll go outside, I'll get some footage of the buses out there for you. So this whole street is uh, jam-packed with buses of all different ages and models. And that's the thing about Bridgeton, you get a variety of buses and you can see them actually on the streets rather than just in a field. You know, and a field or a outside rural area, you actually see them in the urban environment where most of them probably would have worked being city buses. That's an MCW Metro bus that's sitting idling there. Alexander Ivy type body. The one on the right here is uh, Leyland Atlantean, I think, with Alexander A.V. types and Leyland National just on the other across the road. It's a right bodied Volvo B10 BLE or something. Yeah, I think this is a. Uh, tell you about the back axle. Yeah, I think it's Volvo actually. B10 BLE, this single deck. I think it's that will be not a B10L, but I think it's a B10BLE. So you got a Routemaster there in front, 23 Glasgow. That's the bus that came through on. It's a Volvo Olympia. And then you've got uh, the low height you also park behind there. Then you've got this old Leyland bus coming up. Just about to turn left into the main museum area with some buses parked further up there at the back. Well, no power steering so it's a bit of a chore for them to get around. So we've just got to try and find somewhere at the park. <laughs> so that's that and then you've got the, end, the back entrance to the museum they've got the low height. I've done a video on this low height Volvo L set at the back here TRR814R. 
used to be RTO, I think it was RTO 120R originally. I've done a video on it anyway. Uh, if you type in Volvo Elsa low height, you should come up on my channel, Volvo Elsa Mark 1. Again, I've done about two hours worth of video on it, including footage of the, well, it was being driven. driven. I even get footage of me driving it because I got asked my mate to film me it, uh, me driving it, so there's a bit of that. So I had a good shot as a passenger, I had a good shot of driving it. I got external and internal footage of this bus on a separate video all about this. I think I done that last year as well. It's the one, it's the one and only low height Volvo Ilse ever built. 13 foot 8 high. That was a 30 foot 6 high. Let's take it under low bridges. It was a one off experiment but it was never repeated. All the standard Ilses are 14 and a half foot tall. 14 and a half foot high is the standard height for a Volvo Ilse. And this is the only one that's at 13 and a half foot. A one-off experiment, but it was never repeated. So it's a very unique bus, this one. It's an AEC Routemaster behind me in passing. It's a classic, classic old bus. It's the, it's the classic, iconic bus, the Routemaster. Everybody knows it. Well, there's another old bus coming in. Just coming in around the corner, which is good to see it because, as I say, at Lith Almond, it's in the rural environment, whereas here it's in the urban environment. You can see it actually on streets, passing cars. And you know, giving me junctions and all that. It's quite a unique experience here at Bridgeton Bus Museum event because you get to see the buses actually in the urban environment as opposed to the normal rural environment. And there's this really old thing at the back as well. So as I say, this is the bus I came through on. Well, it's a Volvo Olympia. This is an old railing of, uh, it's probably, I don't know, about 100 year old or something. <laughs> this is a real antique vintage bus, this thing. Predates the registrations and that. I don't know, it's probably 1930 or something. Maybe about 100 year old anyway, I'm guessing. I've seen it before at La it's a very uh, rare old bus, so it gets a lot of attention that one. So the street's chaotic. There's <laughs> bus spotters all over the street, old buses everywhere. It's, uh, and they've also got ordinary cars just going about their business. <laughs> so, uh, back entrance to the buses could go in from that entrance as well. So there's a, an old vintage bus down there as well, I'm not quite sure what that is. Behind that is a right bodied Volvo or something, I don't know. I don't know, I have a closer look, but I'm going to wait a hop on a bus. I'm going to get on one of the buses that goes into the centre of Glasgow because they got a leap from the back. So I'm going to go on whatever bus is going to kill them all. I'll get off, I'll get to the centre of Glasgow, I'll get a battery leap for this phone and then I'll uh, at least I've got that and I'll continue on doing some miscellaneous filming. I might even get footage of the bus trip as well. I don't know which one's going next, I better find out. So I'm going to get this bus here, the 5 to 2 km bus on the Daimler Fleetliner. And that will take me into Glasgow Central and I'll be getting back late from the So it's also nice to get some footage whilst I'm on it as well. So the Pier Edge Fleetliner just going away to kill him off. I'm going to catch this one. Uh, get into the Glasgow, get a battery lead, and I'll get footage of it. This is it here. That's what we need to get to. I'll get some. And you can see the Elsha just at the bottom of the road there, just the... There's an open topper bus just pulling into the street, just at the bottom there. I'll get a still picture of this before.
I like that view of the Elsie just tucked in there at the back with the light one. So yeah, I'm just getting more of that with the Elsie the way it's sort of the lights off at the moment, but I look quite smart the way I was just sort of parked up there in the back. <clears throat> so this this Daimler foot line is going to wait and leave shortly and I'll get some footage inside for you so you can hear what it sounds like. So it's uh, semi-automatic gears. That's the gear stick there. That's the reverse block. You have to pull it all the to get it to reverse. It's got the ratchet handbrake.
further along that bus to here, Killamore Road, the bus station in the centre of the Glasgow. I'll go and get a bar to lead and I'll come back here again to get a business bus back to the museum. I'll get footage of that one going off. There she goes, it's a way to pull off, I'll get the exhaust side because the engine's in the, in the rear of the exhaust so you get a lot of the good sound from the, you know, the deep powers for note, or the engine note from the exhaust and the Gardner engine fleet liner. So here it is, it's pulling off, very Sounded like a bus. <laughs> yeah, a bus should, should sound deep, powerful. So, uh, there's a lot of enthusiasts up here for that reason, just watching the buses pull in and out the, on the streets and you know doing its work and loading and offloading and loading up, as well as the actual service buses. Got the everyday service buses as well, the contrast to the vintage bus, which is. Uh, and there's a lot of enthusiasts that will sort of stay around here to see the buses and then they'll make their way back I suppose so I'm going to uh, get a shot to get a battery lead for this and then I will turn back up here to get a vintage bus back to the museum so I don't want to spend too long doing this so I better get moving to uh, Buchanan bus station as you probably know the Cine World big multi-screen Cine World cinema complex just in my head all that wouldn't have been around in the day when that bus was in service my battery lead and I spotted this really old vintage bus that's about to come up. Just, I saw it coming up so I made a dash right to the bus stop to get it to go back to the museum. It should just be coming up at the junction, the sort of the traffic lights. So there it is. And then an antique bus in a modern world. So I'll make myself no one and what not it. That's if I get on. <laughs> Hopefully there's enough room, enough space. So there's people are offloading so I should get on it. Uh, I'll get some footage when I go on it. Probably a hundred year old or something this bus. <laughs> there you are, imagine that's an electric bus here in the distance and I don't like BYD. Single deck and viral electric bodied, uh, viral bodied BIAD chassis. Electric bus just over there. And now we've got this 100 year old bus. <laughs> you got all this sort of modern day life, Cine World, Multex, Cinema Screens, Electric Cars, and you've got this. So it's a good contrast.
Twee Belgische goal, drie Belgische goal, nooit een kwart Belgische goal. Transport Museum and Killamoke, which is Killamoke Road, where the bus station is, Buckhannon bus station. This is the Scania byway, this is the right bodied Scania. So that's the vintage one that got me here back to the museum. It was a nice view of the Elsie, the way it's parked there with the sun shining off it, just shining off the chrome on the top of the window, it's how I remember the Tayside ones. They're one of my favourite buses of all, that type of body. The bus mingles in with all other buses, it's just sort of, you know, it's just everything sort of suits, puts everything in perspective. It's actually busy as well, and it looks like it's in service, you know, with all other activities going on. It's not just a static exhibit, it's actually working in all the other buses, so it's in amongst the midst of it, and the way it's sitting there with all the traffic and everything, the buildings next to it. So that's the type of bus that got me into buses. That's my favourite type of all types, the Tayside ones. That's a good Strathclyde one. It's the uh, same type of body work as the Tayside ones that I like, because obviously I live in Dundee all my life, and that's the ones I remember, and Dundee Tayside had um, but This one's obviously a Glasgow Strathclyde one, but it's the same type of body work. That's my favourite buses of all. That's what got me into buses since I was 12. Uh, so yeah, the Volvo will say that. Well, it's a very unique and uh, important. That <laughs> means a lot to me. <coughs> so this old vintage bus is just coming on the corner. Leyland, right above us. Another old vintage. Leyland, Leyland, right above us. I think. And another one. So we'll get footage of this coming on the corner as well. Get to hear it. So it's good that because you get to see the buses actually doing corners and stopping at junctions and give ways, and that's what the bus has done when they were in service. So it's more like a realistic sort of, it's not just as I say, like a static exhibit at a museum where it's not really doing much. Or if you're out in the rural all the time, it's just once it's up to speed, it's up to speed, it stays here. But in the city and urban, it's going through all the gears, cornering, braking, accelerating, and you get the full character of the buses. That's the advantage of having the museum in Bridgeton, in Glasgow, in the urban environment. It's a bit chaotic because it is an actual live road. <laughs> so, but it adds to the authenticness of it, I suppose. I'll have to get a selfie with that in the background as well, by the way. <laughs> so, yeah, just. We look around the corner here just to So these are Leyland Nationals. Uh, 
something I believe anyway, if I'm correct, I'm pretty sure I am or not. That's a Leyland National. I don't quite I think it's a Leyland National too. The one in front, maybe I'll show them Leyland National too. That was the two single decks that just went past there. So this is the one anyway, the Elsa's, that's the main. And of course it's neighbouring, this is the Mark 1 low height of all the Elsa. I mentioned before, I've done a video on that separately on my channel, all about it. Exclusive. The first part for this bridge and series, well, all about this Elsa. The Mark 3, the Mark 3 RV type body Strathclyde with, with the Voith transmission. Because some of the Strathclyde Mark 3 RV type bodies had SCG gearboxes. Which is what this has got, an SCG gearbox. But the majority, I think, of the Mark 3s were Volvo, uh, were Voith transmissions. It's got the distinctive hydraulic oil pump whine to it. It gives it that distinctive sound. So, I think what I'll do now is I'm going to just maybe go to the bus to the museum, I don't know. I just don't want to risk missing another shot on that at half past three. See, it's quarter past three. I don't know if I'll get back in time. I'll have to check. Uh, hopefully I will get back in time. I'm going to maybe go out to the Riverside Museum on one of the buses and get back in time for another shot on the Ailsie. So, I'll see how it goes. I'll think about that anyway. that I got up uh, from the bus station back to here, it's just pulling in. I'm going to have a shot on this bus, I'm going to have a shot on that going to the Riverside Museum and back. This is a modern one, the Scania. I hope we get back in time for half past three or four for the Wobble Elsa. So I'm going to have a wee shot. This is a modern one. Uh, going to get that shot. Right bodied Scania. Just to make sure those people never meet the destination. We're going to have a shot this one to the Riverside Museum. Hopefully, get back to the Nova. We'll have a passport. Again, for the fourth shot. If I miss the Elsie, well, it's like three shots. It's going to kill them all. It's going to be the Riverside Museum. Get for a hundred. We're going to take the opportunity to do this. I like that. Something ancient. 
but uh, so the vintage, which is the Elsa, Ag antique, which was a really good period. We've got something like old modern, so it's like uh, an old modern piece. It's modern. It's,
again. That's got Transport Museum. I've done a video on that on my channel before, so I'll take it back and you can look at it if you want to see my version of it. And then the bus just basically goes back, <coughs> free shuttle service from here to back to the museum. Yeah, so it's definitely a scanner. It was right the first time. <laughs> After going to Bit of a U-turn. It is actually a Scania. So I was right the first time, but it sounded like a Volvo. So uh, you can tell by the back axle, and it was very similar in sound. I thought at first it was a Scania, and then I thought I sort of heard it, and it sounded like a Volvo. And I thought, no, it's a Volvo. But then when I confirmed it, it was a Scania. So no, I can't be wrong. Not this time. So I was right the first time. But then it, it, it just sounded so like the Volvo B10 BLEs, and I haven't driven them for quite a few years. I didn't normally make that mistake, it did sound very much like the Volvo B10 BLE. So, anyway, I'm not really bothered. You know where it is now, so here you go. We're at the Glasgow, uh, Glasgow Transport Museum, Free Transport Museum. <coughs> I got it like this time. <laughs> I had to correct that. I said it was a blooming Volvo, but it, oh, good to get a view of the engine. Wow. Yes. So that's the Scania power. There you go. This is it. There's nine litre. Eleven. Eleven. Ah, thirsty beast. Yeah, it tastes like it had the transverse malted engines that were uh, eleven litres. The K K113, I think it was. Slanked body. Yeah, this was this was the slightly later one, the L113. They turned it round and tilted it sideways oh, and did all sorts of clever stuff so they could fit in a low floor arrangement. Yeah, yeah. I'd driven the Volvo B10 BLEs. Yeah. With the, uh, what I was going to show you was seeing what, what you were saying. Well, we're heading back to the, heading back to the museum.
So that's us back to the museum. And isn't that quite a sight? <laughs> So I'm back on the Elsa again for the fourth help. So I got back in plenty of time for them. It was at half past four. I got out the other bus about quarter past four. So I had 15 minutes to spare. So I was back in plenty. I was really concerned in case I missed it. But I didn't. So it's been a lucky day in that respect. I'm going to up to the bus station again. But, you know, so. I won't need to film this because part one for this uh, series was all about this bus. So I don't need to film it anymore. Um, I'm just going to sit back and enjoy it. <laughs> So you've got all the footage of this on part one. Sample. You get if you got part one, as I say, you'll get a good 40 minutes footage of this bus. Right, so I think I'll pretty much round off the video. Round it off. I've done quite a lot. I don't know how many parts I'm going to make this yet. The first part is about the Bob Wells. The other parts will just be the museum and the shots on the other buses. So it's quieting down a bit now. It's half five already. Been here about. I think we got here at half nine, so it's eight hours I've been here. <laughs> Only got four hours sleep as well, so I'm a bit tired. Though. But I never get tired, so have one on the next. <laughs> so um, yeah, we'll put the stall away and that. So I'm not sure what we're doing for tea. But uh, I'll just see what's happening. There was very quiet. Still, I might even get a wee shot of that here, so <laughs> Uh, it's still winding at the moment. So I so love the sunset actually, you get the sun colours of the reflection on buses off the you know off the wet roads, it's got that kind of effect as well. So I think a lot of bus spots are waiting till it quiets down so they can get the colours and all that and the nice clear shots of the buses. You know, when it rains you get a, it sort of makes it a crystal like effect, crystal pictures. So it makes it clearer, eh? Crisper. So And there's buses on the corner as well. I'll get the footage of that for you too. So that will probably just round off the video. I'll get some. I'll, I'll get some like still photographs for the photo slideshow at the end of the series as usual. Anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if anything like that I feel is what's worth recording, I shall just record it and put it on the end after the even though I've rounded it off. <laughs> but I'll get footage anyway. I'll get the photos and stuff like because it's a lot less activity going on now so I can get much clearer shots of the uh, buses so I'll get the stills done now but as far as the videos bits the video footage bits I can send I'll just run the video for this so I hope you enjoyed the video um, tomorrow I'm going through to Loch Gally Raceway to watch the Packers racing <laughs> it's the total opposite end of the spectrum when it comes to motor sport and motor events because obviously this is like highly preserved <laughs> Whereas the bangers, it's a motor, motoring event, but it's about destroying them, but it's cars, you know. Uh, so it's going from one extreme where they preserve them with, you know, uh, look after them. But they, on the other hand, when they go to the bangers racing, it's the exact opposite. It's just old cars getting smashed on. So uh, as I say, my channel covers 
everything, like, you know, lots of things. So, <laughs> I just find it ironic, really, that today's Saturday and a vintage vehicle event, and tomorrow, Sunday, and going to the banger racing to <laughs> watch cars get destroyed. But anyway, it's getting it's actually freezing. Bear in mind, it is October, so that's the thing about the bridge, the events, it's always in October, but it's been living freezing. Right, anyway, I hope you enjoyed my video. I'll see you also got on my channel. Well, you know that I'll be putting up the banger racing at some point. Uh, when I get around to compiling it. I'm going to the Blackwell next week as well, so we're going to